Hello YouTube, this is William. Um, I get asked at least twice a week, three times a week, about heat treat. Um, I did a video about why things, some things are secret to address that, but um, there are some tips and tricks that I can pass on. Uh, the reason I do not give temperatures and durations and all this other stuff is because it may not work for you. Uh, it depends on equipment, depends on climate, depends on a lot of things. Uh, case in point, I'm trying to figure out a new steel called Nitro V. And I followed uh, someone's uh, heat treat method on YouTube. It didn't work for me. But that doesn't mean that his heat treat process is wrong. It just didn't work for me and my equipment. So I gotta go try something else. Heat treat depends on so many variables. It is, it's almost an art form. It, it, you have to develop a feel for each type of steel and each thickness of that steel. So, <clears throat> with that said, in order to develop that art form or that feel for that steel, it takes trial and error. There is no secret formula that I can give you that's gonna work. Okay, so I'm not going to give you any formulas. Um, I will give you some tips and tricks that I use that works for me. It may be a little absurd at times and it may be um, um, sound a little strange to you, but this is what works for me. Okay, first of all, each blade that I, I do, when I stamp it, I ask a blessing over. Okay, that is my belief. I am a Christian. So I believe that everything that I do must be blessed. So I ask a blessing over that blade. All right, that's the number one thing that I do. Uh, when I heat treat, especially I use kilns. I don't, I don't use forges. I don't use any flames of any type. I use electric heat in kilns. Uh, and I have two different kilns. Uh, these kilns are... One's an older Paradon, the other one's a newer one. The newer one heats up quicker and cools quicker. So you have to learn to, to learn your equipment as well. If it's an oil quench, I preheat my oil in turkey cookers to 125 to 150, somewhere between there. Optimum for me is 130. So before I quench anything, that oil is preheated and I use uh, 70 quench oil from Chevron. You can get it at any of the knife supply houses. I think I got mine from um, Knives USA or, or one of those supply houses. Uh, you can get it just about anywhere. Okay, it's just, it's just regular quench oil. For plate quench, with some steels is plate quench, I use one inch aluminum plates. And I use a 40 pound weight on it. I don't have a vise or anything like that. I put it inside the, between the two plates, place a 40 pound barbell on top of it. That's what works for me. All right. Um, when I am heat treating in kilns, um, I do not have more than three blades in that kiln at a time. I don't want my blades touching each other because heat transfers between metals. So I don't want my blades touching any other other blades while I'm heat treating. And also, you want that temperature to be optimum when you pull that blade out to quench it either by oil, plates, or air. You want to make sure that that, that blade is, um, is um, at that optimum temperature. Okay, so if you have a bunch of blades in there and you're continually opening the kiln to get blades out, I just don't do that, okay? <clears throat> because every time you open that door, temperature drops. Um, the um, when I pull a blade out, whether it's to quench in oil plates or whatever, all fans, all doors, everything is closed. I don't want any air circulating whatsoever. I want that to be completely dead air, steel air. So when I pull it out, I don't want anything to cool that blade quicker than it's supposed to be cooled. All right. In other words, if you got fans going and you pull that blade out of a out of a kiln at optimum temperature, 
and then you go to quench it you've got air blowing on that blade cooling it before it's quenched it's not good I don't like that okay so I don't I turn off all fans close all doors if there's a breeze outside and it's circulating in the shop I'll close the doors all right now when you set the blade inside the ovens to temper again I don't stack blades on top of one another I don't want any metal touching any of my blades matter of fact I use the ceramic stand-ups that you put inside the kilns I stack the blades in there like that so that they're on ceramic not even on the metal trays all right metal transfers heat so I want that blade to have the right temperature at all times so I'll stack it in ceramic those ceramic uprights all right again it may seem sound extreme that's how I do it okay um, see if there's anything else oh um, when I first started heat treating uh, there was some good advice given to me by Dan at uh, Dogwood Knives a uh, fantastic guy um, he said five degrees is a lot so when you're trying to find that optimum temperature for your knives or your steel your blades vary it five degrees here and there and test them there's blades that I've been testing for months to get that right uh, heat treat for that type of steel and that thickness uh, I've dialed it in on, on a certain thickness on the AEBL now I'm trying to, to see what the steps up works for me for the thicker steel so we're going with the 530 seconds right now and I'm on my second run of prototypes to figure out what is optimal for that steel I don't just throw a steel out on the market and say okay it's ready to go it, it's thoroughly tested before I send it out on the market to make sure that that heat treat process for that steel is optimum for that thickness that type of knife and that steel okay so when you're putting your product out on the market you have to test your product okay you can't go by what somebody else says you have to test your own products and again five degrees is a lot five minutes is a lot when you're talking heat treat so vary it back and forth until you figure out what works best for your blades and your grinds. My grinds tend, tend to be a little bit thinner than others, so I have to make sure that that temper is perfect, all right? Because otherwise my, my edges just will not work. They won't hold an edge very well or they'll chip or they'll roll. So I want to make sure I get the optimum heat treat for my blades. All right, so I hope these tips and tricks and everything works for you. Um, Again, I am not going to give out temperatures. I'm not going to give out durations because what works for me is not going to work for you. I have different equipment, different climate. I just a lot of variables goes into that. And two, it would be a disservice to you because what works for this steel is not going to work for the next steel. You have to develop a feel for each type of steel, for each uh, thickness of steel. And um, somebody dictating to you how that steel is heat treated is not going to be a service to you okay um, the best thing that I can do is, is establish a baseline and you can get that on, on any of the, the supply houses they will have a typical heat treat chart for that particular steel go with that and start with that and then experiment okay find out what works for you that's how I did it that's how everybody in the world does it all right it doesn't mean that um, we're trying to be mean <laughs> or, or harbor industrial secrets. It just means that we know steel and we know it won't work for everybody. Okay? So the best service that we can give you is to give you pointers and point you in the right direction and say experiment. Have fun with it. Get those, buy that steel. You got to have an investment. Everything that's worthwhile is an investment. Will it be time or money? In this case, it's going to be time and money. <laughs> okay, until the next one. You guys get in the backyard, whittle on a stick. Be sure and uh, take a child with you. Get the opportunity. And um, don't forget those plenty of band-aids and lots of knives. We'll catch you again soon. Bye-bye.